Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our practice questions, we have a couple of announcements. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS will be conducting a national scholarship test which will be scheduled to be conducted on 17th of April 2022. How do you register? Follow the link given in the description box, give the necessary details and you would be able to win some attractive scholarships. The next announcement is in reference to the mnemonics and mind maps. This third episode of the mnemonics and mind maps will be released tomorrow at 3 p.m. Then we have the explain session where the topic for the discussion would be Sri Lanka's economic crisis where we will have a live session at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Let's get started and look into the first question. Which of the following statements is are correct with respect to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar? He was born in Ambadevad town of Ratnagiri, Maharashtra. He was part of Bombay Presidency Committee that worked with the Simon Commission in 1925. He started magazines like Mukhanayak, Reshwa and Bahishkrit Bharat. The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this ad on the Hindu makes a reference to Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkarji. When we look into the first option, he was not born in Ambadewade town of Ratnagiri, Maharashtra, but instead he was born in Mo in central provinces, which in the modern day happens to be Madhya Pradesh. So remember, his family had connections to Ambadewada town of Ratnagiri, Maharashtra, but he wasn't born in that particular place. Instead, he was born in Mo in central central provinces. So the first option is wrong. When we look into the second option, yes, he promoted the education of Dalits and made representations to the government in various capacities. He was part of the Bombay Presidency Committee that worked with the Simon Commission back in the year 1925. So the second statement is right as he was part of the Bombay Presidency Committee. And we all know for the fact that Ambedkarji was known for his prolific writing. He has written number of books. He has also written number of journals as well and he started magazines like Mukh Nayak, Bahishkrit Bharat. So when you look into this practice question, when you look into the third option, it makes a mention of Reshwa. Reshwa wasn't written by Dr. B. R. Ambedkarji but instead Reshwa was written by another freedom fighter. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section who has written Reshwa. Now if we look into some of the other facts, in 1927, he launched active agitation against untouchable he organized and agitated for the right of the Dalits to enter temples and to draw water from the public water resources. Further, Ambedkar founded the Independent Labour Party in 1936, contested in 1937 from Bombay to the Central Legislative Assembly. He also contested from Bombay after independence in the country's first election, but he lost both the times as well. He was appointed to Raj Sabha in 1952 and remained a member till his death. He also advocated free economy with a stable rupee. He also mooted birth control for economic development and he also emphasized equal rights for the women. These are some of the important factual data from the preliminary examination point of view. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements with respect to Mahavira. He is considered to be a contemporary of Buddha. He did not condemn the Varna system. He did not believe in God's existence. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this ad on the Hindu makes a reference to Bhagwan Mahavir. Let's look at some of the important factual data with respect to Bhagwan Mahavir. When we look into the data, Mahavira rejected Vedic principles. He did not believe in the God's existence. According to him, the universe is a product of natural phenomenon of cause and effect and he believed in the principle of karma and transmigration of the soul and he also believed that one will be punished or rewarded as per one's karma. It stressed on equality but did not reject the caste system unlike Buddhism. What do we mean by it? We have the Varna system, the so-called Brahmins, then the Kshatriyas, then the Vaishyas and the Shudras. This is called as the Varna 
Sankhana system. According to Jainism, it stressed on the equality but did not reject the Varna system, which basically meant because of the goodwill, because of the previous karma, because of the actions that a person has committed in the past, he would be placed under a particular Varna system, said Jainism. But in Buddhism, it opposed the Varna system. But Jainism did not oppose the Varna system. Two elements of the world are Jiva, which is the conscious state. Then there is Atma, which is the unconscious state. So it believes in right faith, right knowledge and right conduct and observance of five woes. What are these woes? Ahimsa, Satya, Astheya, Parigraha and Brahmacharya. These are some of the important principles of Jainism and there are three jewels of Jaina called as right faith, right knowledge and right conduct. All this will have to be practiced by the followers of Jainism. So if we look into the practice question, he is considered to be a contemporary of Buddha. Yes, this is the right statement. He did not condemn the Varna system. This statement is also right and he did not believe in the God's existence. This is also a right statement. Since all the three statements are right the answer to this would be one two and three now let's look into the next practice question with reference to coal which of the following statements is are correct anthracite has the highest energy content of all coals the percentage of carbon in bituminous coal is between 25 to 35 percent which of the statements are correct the answer to this is one only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the pib makes a reference to the coal let us try and understand what are these options when we speak about coal what exactly happens there are different types of coal one is what we call as anthracite then what we have is the bituminous coal the third that we have is the lignite of all anthracite is assumed to be one of the best amongst the three why that is because it has highest energy content of all the coals this is the right statement and when you look at the carbon content it is more than 86 percent in the anthracite but when it comes to the bituminous coal the carbon content is not 25 to 30 percent it is more than that and less than the bituminous coal so when we speak about lignite it is between 25 to 35 percent but when it comes to bituminous it is less than 85 percent and varies between 50 to 85 percent so remember when we speak about coal the best coal with higher carbon content which is able to produce higher heat is what is called as anthracite followed by bituminous coal and finally what we have is the lignite what is this PIB article speaking about let's assume there is an area in this area there is a large concentration of coal all the coal that was prevalent in this particular area has been extracted so this particular area no more has the coal or there can also be a situation where lands in this particular area no longer are suitable or economically viable for the coal mining activities so in that particular case where it it is completely decoled or the mining activity cannot be conducted in the near future such land which is under the control of the government will be given to the private parties on the basis of lease and these private parties would be able to conduct activities like washeries coal gasification coal to chemical plants so on and so forth so basically the coal bearing areas acquisition and development act 1957 changes will unlock the non mineable land for development and setting up of infrastructure relating to coal and energy for those areas which is already mined you would not be able to mine in the near future such would be given to the private entrepreneurs and these people would be able to develop infrastructure related activities in such coal mining areas now let's look into the next practice question which amongst the following is the best description of Ishihara test? It is a test that detects and measures antibodies in blood. It is a color perception test for red-green color deficiencies. It is a test to detect genetic material from a specific organism such as a virus. It is a routine screening procedure for cervical cancer. Which of the following is the best description of Ishihara test? The answer to this is, it is a color perception test for red-green color deficiencies. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to the color blindness. So what is this Ishiara test or the Ishiara play test? It is a test which is commonly used for routine color vision screening. 
what exactly happens in the color blindness when we speak about color blindness it is the inability of a particular person to see colors in the normal way let's assume for a moment all of us who have normal vision we would be able to differentiate different types of colors like the red the green blue so on and so forth but for a person who is suffering from color blindness he would not be able to identify green color red color and this can sometimes be blue color as well so what exactly happens when you consider the human eye we have something called as the rod cells then we also have the cone cells what exactly happens when you consider the rods this would be able to identify or distinguish the light and the dark when it comes to the vision and at the same time you also have the cones as well they would be able to identify and detect the color so on one side you have the rods it will be able to identify the light and the dark color on the other side you have the cones which will detect the color but what happens when it comes to color blindness so when we comes to color blindness we have red green and blue and our brains use the information to perceive the color but when it comes to color blindness there is absence of one or more type of cone cells or there is a failure to work efficiently and properly in such a case a person who has color blindness would not be able to identify green color red color and in exceptional cases blue color as well so color blindness generally affects both the eyes and the condition remains roughly the same as long as the individual is alive who is more at risk is it the men or the women men are more at risk they have the higher incidence of color blindness than the women so what are the several factors which cause color vision problem in a person damage caused to the brain or eye or to the nerve cells genetic disorder side effects of drug use of tobacco and alcohol can all be some of the causes of the color blindness now let's look into the next practice question which one of the following statements is correct ajanta caves lies in the gorge of vaghora river sanji stupa lies in the gorge of chambal river pandu lena cave shrines lie in the gorge of narmada river Amravati stupa lies in the gorge of Godavari river which of them is the correct statement the answer to this is a which is ajanta caves lies in the gorge of vaghora river this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021 why is the option b wrong that is because it is not chambal river but instead it is betwa river it is not narmada river instead it is gomai river and finally it is not godavari river instead it is krishna now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is copyright this is taken from the indian express article when we speak about intellectual property what is the intellectual property it refers to the creations of the mind such as inventions literary artistic work designs symbols names and images used in commerce let me simplify this process for you when it comes to the intellectual property it is not just about discovery it is about application of mind what do we mean by discovery let's say for example gravity is a concept gravity as a concept if a person is identifying it discovering it that will not be patented that is not called as intellectual property but if a person uses is brain and create something new that is what is called as intellectual property so you are applying your mind you are applying your conscience you are applying your thought process and inventing new thing which is called as intellectual property merely identifying or discovering will not come under the intellectual property rights when we speak about intellectual property rights it is usually divided into two branches one is what is called as industrial property the other is what is called as copyright what is industrial property let's say for example we have the patents we have the trademarks we have the service marks we have the layout designs commercial names geographical indications all this are part of the industrial property then what we have is called as the copyright so generally when we speak about intellectual property it is nothing but balancing the right of the inventor and at the same time keeping the public interest also in picture when we speak about the public interest there would be a particular period for which exclusive right is given to a patent holder or a copyright holder for which that particular individual or an organization has the exclusive 
exclusive right. So on one side, there is the right of that particular individual which is taken care of because he's put in a lot of money, he's put in his intellect mind. So exclusive right is given to the patent holder or the copyright holder. So what is happening? There is balance to that individual. And at the same time, after a specific duration of time, this patent holder will have to give up his rights as well. So there is balance of the patent holder as well as the interest of the public. Now, what is the focus of this article? The focus of the article is the copyright. So intellectual property can be industrial property like patent or it can also be copyright as well. So what is the copyright? Copyright generally relates to literary and artistic works, dramatic works, musical works, artistic works, cinematography films as well as the sound recordings. All these different aspects for falls under what is called as copyright. Let's say for example, there is a person who's released an album of a song. Does it become a patent or a copyright? It does not become a patent. Instead, it is a copyright. Let's say for example, a person does an artistic work, a painting, so on and so forth, or a photography. Will it be called a patent or a copyright? It will be called as a copyright. So basically, copyright relates to the literary and the artistic creation, such as the books, music, paintings, culture, film, so on and so forth. In certain languages, it is also called as author's right. Who is an author? The one who has created this particular idea. So that particular person will be given certain rights, which is why it is called as the author's rights as well. So remember, when it comes to copyright, we have one of the important laws in India called as the Indian Copyright Act of 1957. This Indian Copyright Act of 1957 also meets the parameters set by the Berne Convention for the protection of literary and artistic works and you also have universal copyrights convention. Generally, when we speak about copyrights, there are a bundle of rights, the exclusive rights which are given to the copyright owner. These rights can be exercised only by the owner of the copyright or it can be given to any other person who is being given license by the owner, authorized by the owner as well. These rights include the right to adaptation, right of reproduction, right of publication, right to make translations, communication to the public, so on and so forth. When it comes to the enforcement of copyright in India, it not only provides civil remedies in the form of permanent injunction, damages or profits from that particular copyright violation, but it can also seek for punishment with imprisonment as well. Now, as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, do computer programs come under the category of copyright? Please put it on the comment section. And if we are speaking about the international conventions, one of the important conventions, as we just discussed, happens to be the Berne Convention. This was adapted back in the year 1886. And we also have the Universal Copyright Convention, which was adapted back in the year 1952. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, what is the Marrakesh Treaty in reference to the copyright? It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So, this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.